Hi students, in this video we are going to study the retention in maxillofacial prosthesis. Now this is a very straightforward uh, topic to know but I will be showing you a lot of clinical images from standard textbooks that will help you answer questions if at all there are new questions that keep popping up from this topic. So this will give you a better visualization as to what kind of uh, images to what kind of pictures to think of when you have a relatable question on this topic. So when we talk of retention in maxillofacial prosthesis, it is necessary to understand that each defect that you are going to restore is going to be different and the ways to maximize retention are going to be different. Now there are a lot of ways in obtaining ideal retention. Now depending on whether you are doing an intraoral restoration or an extraoral restoration or a prosthesis, you will have different ways to take support and retention from areas. Now intraorally you can have any mechanical methods such as clasps or any kind of attachments, precision attachments, semi precision attachment, magnets, etc. So, you can have that, or you can have any other anatomic uh, areas that you can take retention from, for example, any hard and soft tissue undercuts. In case of extra oral prosthesis, that means if it's a facial prosthesis, ocular or vital, depending on whichever area, it can be classified as non adhesive and adhesive type. An adhesive type of uh, prosthesis will require some kind of a sticky material that sticks the restoration to the area. So, you can have uh, a lot of different types of commercially available adhesives based on the material that you've used. So if you're using silicone, you will need a silicone type adhesive. If you've used PVC, you will need a different kind of an adhesive, right? And also in the non-adhesive methods, again, you have the same mechanical and anatomic means. So the anatomic would be through undercuts and areas of the defect, uh, depending on whatever area we are talking about. Mechanical would mean implants, magnets, attachments, tapes, so and so forth. Okay, So these are a few ways of getting retention. Now I will be showing you a few images. So just keep an eye on how these prostheses look. Okay, Now this is an orbital uh, prosthesis as you can see. It is going to restore the eyeball that is the ocular part and the facial part. Now this has been retained with a lot of magnets. So here the lateral orbital and the nasal implants are placed in this area and then a magnet is inserted in the restoration at different uh, aspects and that is how the restoration will stay in its place. So this is an extra oral uh, orbital that is prosthesis and it is retained with the help of implants and magnets. Now this here is a mandibular uh, defect following resection probably due to squamous cell carcinoma. So as you can see the mandible starts to deviate on the side where it is uh, where there are teeth present in order to get the contact. So the patient will not be able to close the jaw in the right space in the right place. So this is called a guide flange prosthesis and it looks similar to a cast partial tension but the extensions are a little different. So this is your conventional cast partial metal framework with teeth arrangement, acrylic, everything just the same, taking attachments from the adjacent teeth with the help of clasp assemblies, right? So this is clasp retained intraoral restoration. Now a similar uh, defect can also be treated with the help of uh, dental implants. So the implants can be of various types based on wherever they are placed but they also have a lot of connection possibilities. So here as you can see there is a bar that runs on the implants and that supports the restoration. Here it is directly attached to the implants with the help of a locator attachment. So it can be variable kind of attachments if implants are used for a defect. Now these implants are placed in non-native bone. That means the mandible has been reconstructed with either a fibular graft or any any synthetic grafts and then you can place the implants and then support a restoration on top of it. Okay, now here you have an example of a maxillary obturator which is completely acrylic. 
so this is taking support from the tissue undercuts right because it is engaging in all the areas where it can uh, you know take retention from in the mouth and then there are these additional two attachments over here so these are uh, magnetic retention and they are taking support from two teeth which were preserved before resection so you can also use copings on existing teeth and provide attachments on top of that and use magnets to support a restoration so these are magnet retained and mechanically retained or anatomically retained restorations right now next restoration is again a lot of implants in hemimandibulectomy so here reconstructed mandible and you can see implants placed so three implants and these are ball attachments in the mouth and this is the restoration so you can see the outcome is going to you know be very critical depending on what kind of factors uh, that you are considering so anatomy is important the kind of mechanical equipment you are using the implant is important the magnet is important here this is ball attachment and this is the framework of the denture so this entire assembly is going to seat on the uh, ball attachments and there is a clasp which is taking support posteriorly and also providing a guidance for the mandible to come back to the desirable position now this is one of the uh, fancier ways of providing retention suppose if you are restoring for example say the orbit orbital prosthesis or if you are giving ocular prosthesis or a nasal prosthesis then you can use camouflage treatment that means you can use something that is going to hide the margins and the defect with the help of spectacles now this is a question from previous year spectacle frames can be used to camouflage auricular nasal orbital and nasal orbital so auricular not so much can be used yes but because the spectacle actually takes support from the ears it's not the best way to provide a camouflage as such with auricular prosthesis but nasal and orbital can really be supported with the help of glasses right then the next image over here is to show orbital restoration again and there are three implants along the rim of the orbit and this is going to provide attachment magnetic attachment for the uh, maxillofacial prosthesis now this is an auricular prosthesis as you can see there is a bar so that means uh, implants were placed and this bar is going to support the auricular prosthesis with some clips so this is bar retained auricular prosthesis and there was a question on this kind of a restoration too a person with implant supported auricular prosthesis will frequently complain of lack of retention support hygiene and difficulty in adaptation and the correct answer is lack of hygiene because the retention is provided by the implant and the clips support is from the tissues difficulty in adaptation no because it is an implant supported restoration the main advantage is that the patients can easily adapt to it because there is no additional adhesive used but hygiene becomes a problem because the areas are very difficult to clean and maintain so because there is not enough venting around or there is not enough air flow here there is a lot of accumulation of uh, sweat and debris and bacteria and it gets inflamed very easily so maintaining hygiene in implant supported auricular prosthesis is a major concern then the next prosthesis here is uh, a nasal prosthesis and as you can see there are three implants in the superior border of maxilla and there are bars and magnets which are going to uh, provide adequate retention for the nasal prosthesis so the question associated with this which was asked in a previous exam is the best outcome for implant retained nasal prosthesis achieved by placing the implants on and the options are medial aspect of zygoma superior surface of maxilla glabella and vomer so for nasal prosthesis the ideal place is superior surface of maxilla glabella and vomer are too far and medial aspect of zygoma it's too it makes it too broad so the idea is to place it in a very favorable anatomic position depending on the bone availability so this table is important remember that auricular prosthesis the implants are placed in temporal bone for nasal prosthesis they are placed in the superior surface of maxilla and for orbital prosthesis on the supra orbital rim in the lateral rim of the residual orbit which i had shown you earlier for magnetic retention so these are some pictures to keep in mind uh, some images illustrations to kind of you know uh, help you understand all the different types of retentive elements that can be used in maxillofacial retention so this is a flow chart that is more or less the same as what i told you 
uh, first on, on the first page you have the intraoral on the second page you have the extraoral so intraoral can be retained by clasp assemblies and hard and soft tissue undercuts the clasps can be rod wire type stainless steel cast metal type different configurations so you can have circumferential ring clasp and t clasp or you can have any other type of continuous clasps also you can have different type of attachments like i told you you can have precision attachments which are manufactured by the uh, industry or semi precision which are lab casted you can have snap on attachments implants magnets swing lock devices and auxiliary retentive devices additional retentive devices you can have guide planes different types of other retentive units like valve seals springs adhesives etc and then the extra oral uh, retention is through mechanical methods uh, like uh, implant supported restorations with bars and clips or ball retentions magnets camouflage like spectacles and miscellaneous other methods like tapes sutures wire components metal bands conformers eye patch so a lot of lot of ways so that's a lot of ways of uh, providing retention anatomically you can use soft tissue undercuts anatomic projections sinuses in the area external auditory meatus for auricular prosthesis or adhesive is also a very popular way of providing retention you can use silicon based adhesives acrylic based adhesives cyanoacrylates which is like very quick but then depending on the tissue irritation and uh, the feasibility of applying adhesive again and again over the day it has a lot of drawbacks plus solubility is also an issue especially if the patient is in a humid place so some commercially available uh, adhesives are available as liquids emulsions sprays tapes and they are different for silicones pvc and polyurethane these are some retentive methods for extraoral maxillofacial prosthesis so the adhesives uh, are the most commonly used method in retention they provide sufficient retention for a very limited period of time and the main drawback is the accumulation of dust particles at the interface of the skin and the adhesive so they can get irritating at sometimes especially if the patient compliance is not very good with adhesives now implants are more sophisticated ways of providing retention they can be silicon they can be silicon based adhesives or resin adhesives or pressure sensitive adhesives now what is a pressure sensitive adhesive it is a it is a tacky very sticky kind of a substance that adheres to a given surface even by applying light pressure and you've seen a lot of uh, people who use it for you know using hair and wigs artificially when they want to stick it on the head that's the kind of adhesive you use they are manufactured by a uh, hot melting method I'm not going into the detail of that then you have gecko skin adhesive gecko is uh, that animal like which looks like a lizard it has very sticky feet and they rely on the concept of draping adhesion which is like uh, and it is to create highly elastic stiffness in different direction like rubbery kind of a, a adhesion and this property enables the adhesive load to be evenly distributed across the surface rather than concentrating it in one area then different types of implants can be used you can have endosteal implants where the implants are placed within the jaw bone and they are the ones which we commonly use in our day to day practice it is very sophisticated one of the most popular retentive methods then you have subperiosteal implants which are placed under the bone under the gum uh then they are using shallow jaw bones not very popular transosseous implants where uh, they go continue where they go con completely into the jaw bone till the residual bone into the basal bone rather and take support from the uh, base of the mandible or the maxilla and uh, the examples of some implant supported maxillofacial restorations are bar and clip magnet and ball attachments magnets were very popular at one point of time but they are now replaced with uh, implants and clip attachments they uh, can be used to limit the movement of a lot of extraoral prosthesis including dentures too uh, they are good retentional aids for sectional dentures they provide good retention and stability and uh, they do not induce any stress around the implants but the problem is corrosion and they have to be maintained or rather replaced from time to time and the scratches the wear and tear the food particle entrapment that keeps coming with these magnets is also a problem then spectacle frames like i told you very useful for orbital and nasal prosthesis to camouflage the borders margins and to provide a proper seating in the same place every time 
Now the retention depends on muscular control of that area and the size of the surgical cavity. So it is necessary that you evaluate the size and site of the uh, defect. Then availability of tissue undercut is important. You can also obtain some amount of retention from the residual teeth if it is an intraoral prosthesis. Support is mainly from the tissue, so the residual maxilla and the residual teeth, the residual alveolar region, heart palate. These are the areas that you can get support for maxillary prosthesis. And then anatomic retentive regions include also the fibrous scars, which are surgical scars where there is thick band of tissue, rolled edge of palatal remnants and base of nasal mucosa of the nasal septum. So surgically, whatever has been rolled out, thickened and fibrous will also serve as a good base for providing the retention for your maxillofacial prosthesis. Now, what kind of questions to expect? I've already told you a lot of image based questions and very straightforward questions can be expected from this topic. So I hope this video is useful and interesting. Thank you so much for watching.